Yes, in this video, we are going to see how uh, the assurance of memory uh, not to be affected by other users is done. So, how uh, memory is protected? Uh, how one program is not intervening with the other user's process? So, that is what we are going to see. What technique the operating system uses? So here, let us consider this is the memory array, main memory, where in the main memory operating system. So anyway, when you are booting the system, when you are switching on the system, we call it as a booting of the system. So what happens in the booting of the system? A boot program runs. So what is the purpose of that uh, bootstrap program? It first find out where the uh, operating system is present in the disk. Okay, it is not actually present in the primary memory it will be stored in our C drive. Okay, so from that, the program operating system will be loaded into the main memory. So it occupies some space. Then now I am opening a Turbo C++ or some Java program. Now that Java compiler will be loaded. Let us take, I am running a Turbo C++. Now I have opened that. So that compiler will be placed and it in that I am opening, I am uh, pressing the file open etc and then opening a particular I am selecting a folder from my C drive where I have stored that uh, program which I have already stored okay so let us for example prime number now I have opened that prime number now that is loaded here so turbo C++ is there then that also the within that I have opened the prime number now I am opening uh, another Java program, let us say. So in Java, that compiler also I am opening and that also is running there. So here I have opened Turbo C++ and I am running a particular program in that. Here let me say Java. Here let me say I am opening some browser. Okay, I am browsing something. So all these things are said to be processed. So they occupy some spaces. This, uh, These are all loaded from the my secondary storage. Turbo C++ compiler is also present only in my secondary storage. They are not in the main memory. Then Java is also is in the, my secondary storage. That is also not in my main memory. But already we have seen that anything has to be first loaded into the main memory. From there only the CPU has access. So first, even the operating system software also is present only in the secondary storage. So when you do a booting, the what is the purpose of the booting? It first load the uh, operating system into the main memory and then it leave uh, the other spaces are reserved for the user program. Now, I, as I said, the Turbo C++ compiler. Now, I am pressing the Turbo C++. You know, you will, when you double click that icon, automatically that compiler will open, which means the, that compiler is loaded into the main memory. That is the meaning of that. And then within that, I open the program which I want to run. So let us take that as a process one. Then here I am opening a Java compiler and I am putting some Java program there, etc. So I hope now you understand the meaning of a multi-programming as well as multi-process. So here, uh, uh, for me, I don't give any line number for the C++. Uh, whatever I say is, it will be the, uh, it will start from zeroth line or first line till the end of the line. Say for example, I have some uh, coding. So I just, I'll show you. Let me open Genie. Now, if you see this, this is a program, some binary program I have done. So if I say this as a one, this is already generated. This is uh, just number line given by this Genie. Uh, but normally in Turbo C++, I don't think we have this number line. But uh, don't worry about this. But if you see this, this has this much of number of line. How many number of line? 181 lines on that. Sorting from 1, this program consists of 181. So uh, this, the whole program up to 181, all the lines must be loaded into my uh, main memory. Oh, sorry, yes, from this. So this will be, all the lines will be loaded and they will be in my view, these are all in the next next location. Yes or no? After 149, this is 150. After 150, this curly braces comes and so on. So here, what happens? Uh, in my opinion, 
in my view in user's view 151 is a curly braces 151 is another line i'm sure but whereas it will be loaded when it is loaded it occupies this space imagine so 25600 zero zero means 25601 the next line the, uh, so for example this first line will be loaded that is just as an example i'm saying this uh, double double like that is this command statement will be loaded then the next line this will be loaded okay so like this but when i say gv it has the line as one two three but when it comes here it will have the value two five six zero zero one two five six zero two two five six zero three and so on so that is how it is placed suppose i have a line which reference so for example go to suppose imagine you have a statement called go to 14 this line i'm saying go to 14 so now what happens here we have a line called go to 14 means there is no 14 14 is here somewhere after zero which is nothing but an operating system so when i execute that line go to 14 if it goes to this place what will happen and in that go to 14 if i do some uh, changes in the variables etc and this coding line itself will get changes so that should not happen that is what i say by one user process should not go into the other users not only this this process also should not go it should not go to the operating system coding also so that comes there comes the registers called base and limit register which assures that the user process will not go to the operating system as well as it will not go and disturb the other users how it is maintained so we will see that so for example this is the uh, uh, here i have given this example so let me take this let us see some program is loaded here so the base address will consist of the starting of this program so here where it is actually stored in the memory physical memory you can call this as primary memory physical memory as well as main memory all these are same so let us scale this in the physical memory uh, let us imagine this is the starting of the uh, user process second user process so the base register what it will consist of it will consist of the starting address of this then within that suppose i have go to 14 means go to the 14 uh, uh, like that any jump statement is there then it will refer with this 14 will be added okay 3004 plus 14 will be added which is nothing but 24 so correctly it goes to that 24 uh, that is when you see it will be the 14th line so it correctly go and execute there that is what i mean by uh, using of base registers so each and every our line starts from 0 or 1 means from 1 to 14 that 14 will be added here so here it starts from uh, the 0 is mapped to 3000 uh, 30004 then 1 is matched to this the 30,004 plus 1, 30,004 plus 2, and so on. So the next lines will be accessed like that. And the limit register, what is the limit register? Where this process ends. That will be given in the limit register. So each address generated will be checked whether it is less, greater than this and less than this. It should not be more than. Say, for example, if you subtract these two, you will get this value. So uh, your process will consist of only this much value this much is the limit it should not be more than 4 to 0 so for example if you are having an access if you have some value uh, then if you are given like that uh, it will not go to this process so that the limit register will be checked whether the address generated by the particular statement is more than this or less than this if it is less than this limit register only it will allow to execute if it is more than say for example 4 to 0 94 or 95 this generates then it will stop and it will trap making an error that is something is there it is accessing other user process so it will generate an error so that is what we will be seeing see here uh, cpu checks whether it is greater than the base register if it is greater than the base register which is the greater than it must be greater than the base address then only it will allow to process then each address generation it will check these two things whether it is greater than base and then base plus limit 
if it whether it is less than that then only the memory is allowed to access or else it will tap to operating system and it says the error occurred so the base and limit registers by using the base and register limit registers the operating system assures that only uh, each user access their own coding and they are not accidentally also they are not accessing they are not able to access the other user as well as the operating system coding so base and limit is are loaded by the operating system only and by using the privilege instruction when i say privilege instruction it will be executed only by the cpu you know already there are two modes one is privileged mode use our kernel mode and another one is user mode so user mode and kernel mode are the privilege instructions will be executed only in the kernel mode so the base register and limit registers are uh, the privilege the loading of Uh, base and limit registers on the privilege instruction that can be executed only by the cpu since privilege instruction can be executed in kernel mode and only os executes in kernel mode it assures that even the base and limit registers are done, are done correctly so this scheme allows us the os to change the value of the registers but prevents the user program from changing this register this register content also cannot be touched by the user only the cpu will change this so when it when a value is loaded automatically the when a process is loaded automatically its base value and base plus limit value will be loaded by the uh, cpu with its privileged injection this allows os to load user program into user's memory so their user program into the user memory to dump out those programs in case of errors if any error occurs remove those programs from the memory to access and modify parameters of system call to perform io to and from memory and provide other services etc